Greetings, demons, and welcome to Warhammer Weekly, episode 86. So, no pickups, as, you know, I've kind of alluded to in the previous week, but we do actually have a ton of topics to go over because we did, of course, have the World Championships, and, uh, yeah, just in general, a lot of stuff to go over. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Not the leader of a cult, rabbit with sex. And starting off with two very quick topics, just because I want to, you know, just mention these, but uh, I have made a completely separate video about them specifically on my second channel, because it wasn't really first channel content, but uh, yeah, the brand new Dark Tide expansion, or free update, whatever you want to call it, Grim Protocols, is available soon, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty interesting. It, it's just, a, you know, it's an expansion to uh, Dark Tide, you know, if you've been enjoying Dark Tide so far, it's definitely going to be worth downloading. I'm personally going to be downloading it again just to, you know, see what it's also like. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking like it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be available from the 3rd of December, which isn't too far away at all. And, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. If you are interested, I'll have the article linked in the description below, which also has the trailer. And, uh, yeah, there we go. That is, that is the new Dark Tide update. And alongside that, we also got a brand new trailer for Secret Level, specifically pertaining to Warhammer 40k, which did have a decent amount of new shots, and I'm throwing up a few of the shots as well as a very nice gif that's in the article on screen right now. But yeah, once again, full trailer is available on the article linked in the description, and I have done a reaction to both that trailer and the one for Grim Protocols. So if you are interested, just as I say, go to my second channel and uh, you'll check that out. I'll have that linked somewhere either in the description or also on a card or something but uh yeah looks pretty cool i'm i'm really looking forward to secret level it's gonna be really fun i think and at the end of the day like more 40k stuff more more spe specifically more space marine 2 stuff is really appreciative to me and uh yeah in general very much look forward to it but moving on to some stuff that is a bit more tangible we have a new collaboration with weta workshop this time we are getting celestine the living saint as a one sixth scale statue and honestly she looks lovely on at the end of the day like when it's a model like this when it's a statue like this i almost think why would you get it because it is relatively similar to the model and you know you get the enjoyment of actually building the model painting the model yourself all that kind of stuff though i do understand some people really do like to have a highly detailed like kind of quote unquote perfect version of certain characters especially you know if if you are of a certain faction, you know, if you are a Sisters of Battle player, you might want Celestine as, like, a permanent fixture on, like, a display or a shelf or whatever else. And, uh, yeah, no, she looks absolutely lovely. The details look really nice. I love the whole, like, flowers coming off the blade and stuff. Things really, really nice. And alongside that, we are also going to be getting another set of 1-6 replica helmets. And, uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty alright. It's, uh... A decent selection this time around. We have Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and then for our, you know, taste of Xenos, we do have the Eldari Aspect Warrior Helmet. And overall, they all look pretty nice. Obviously, Blood Angels and Space Wolves, pretty basic style helmets. You know, the only thing that really distinguishes them is, you know, their colour and the little symbol on their head. But yeah, relatively, they look nice. I, you know, if you are a fan of Blood Angels and Space Wolves, you know, it's a win win. And I think a lot of people are going to be getting this pack specifically for the Eldari Aspect Warrior. Which, uh, fortunately we do have other Eldari news to come to today, but, uh, yeah, Eldari, El Eldari fans are eating good recently, which is really nice to see. But moving on to our first model reveals for the week and the first of our World Championships preview reveals, we have the new Astro Militarum miniatures for the Death Cause of Krieg, and this is a fan favourite faction of Astro Militarum. It's one of my favourite in terms of aesthetic, though I'm not a huge fan of, you know, Adeptus Militarum in general. Um, I still think these guys look really, really nice. And, yeah, you do get a full selection. You have the Horse Riders, of course, which is a major thing for Krieg. They are well known as being Horse Riders. And we do get an entire selection of those, which all look excellent. I love the horses not being traditional horses. They have, like, weird feet, like, almost like bird feet, which is very interesting. But yeah, you got a variety of flag bearers, spear holders, blades, you know, just all the fun stuff that you love to see with horse riders in um, Astro Mortarum. And uh, yeah, overall, pretty fun there. We also have our regular infantry units. They also have a little drone friend, which is always nice to see one of those. And uh, yeah, overall, the, the, the aesthetic is lovely on the miniatures, like themselves, the actual 
you know, units, the actual soldiers, just look great. I love the the mask. Like they have that. I guess is this supposed to be? I was I was mixing it up. Is this supposed to be the German aesthetic, like German World War uh, Two aesthetic? Because it, there's one of them that's like a World War One aesthetic, one that's World War Two aesthetic, one that's like American World War Two. Just there's a lot of variety with Astromotarum when you get down to like the different factions. I can never remember which one is which specifically, but uh, yeah, I really do like the aesthetic of the Krieg and. Yeah, they've really made it pop. I, I love how they're all painted to have, like, skull masks as well, uh, which I think is quite nice. Like, you don't have to do that, obviously, but I think it does really make it pop. We also have some anti-air guns, which, you know, pretty nice to be getting. Not really the most useful things in gaming, from my experience at least. Uh, but yeah, definitely something that, you know, some people are going to find useful. At the very least, it's nice for, you know, setting a scene, you know, building up some terrain maybe with them, or just generally just if you are a fan of this sort of machinery in real life. There you go, you can uh, paint one up and just have it on your shelf, but yeah, otherwise we also have leadership, models, and all your usual stuff for Astromotar. I'm not going to go into as much detail um, as I do with some other factions, just because I'm not as interested in Astromotar. But yeah, the Krieg stuff always looks great, the gas mask aesthetic is excellent, and uh, yeah, I quite like these servo skulls as well with the uh, parchment, look pretty, pretty nice. And then we also have the ground infantry, the, the gunners. And, yeah, you have the, the heavy, you have the regular uh, twin mount, and then you also have a flamer. So, nice variety there on offer, but, yeah, nothing we haven't seen from other factions within Astro Militarum. At the end of the day, like, that's, that's the main thing. It's like, they're not anything too unique other than, you know, their odd little eccentricities. You know, the horses are the thing that make them unique. We are actually going to be getting a Death Corps of Krieg box, um, which looks pretty nice. It does include all the new units. And, uh, yeah, overall, just a very nice update for a range that has, you know, pretty much been exclusive to resin for the longest time. And, yeah, I, I'm very glad to see these coming back in plastic. I'm, I'm probably going to end up picking up something to do with Krieg, even though I don't really use them. I might even convert them into some Gene Stealer Krieg, which I think would be pretty fun. But, uh, yeah, really do like these guys. And, yeah, pretty nice. But coming back round to Eldari, we finally have the full reveal of the Eldari Phoenix Lords. We obviously got a character a little while ago revealed, and now we have the full range refresh for them. And this is what I was saying, Eldari are eating good right now. Like, there's so much good stuff going on. And honestly, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Eldari aesthetics, I gotta admit, these look great. You know, they are such a big upgrade compared to the previous units. Uh, we have, once again, some characters as well, which looked excellent. And, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm, even as a non-Aldari player, I'm very impressed with how good these guys look. But, uh, yeah, the details on all these characters, all the, all these different units are excellent. We obviously have the flying options as well with, uh, the very Egyptian style wings. Almost remind me, um, of... A thousand suns, interestingly enough, but yeah, these guys look excellent. The dynamic posing is pretty nice. You know, there's nothing too, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. There's nothing too special about their posing, but I just, I love, you know, the fly poses and the way that they get them to look like they're jumping off rocks and whatever else. I, I just think it's a cool aesthetic, and uh, yeah, I'm sure people that are actually Eldari players are going to be really appreciative of these. And then we also have a very interesting... Um, unit. I've never seen anything like this. This one being the warp spiders, and yeah, I, I'm at a bit of a loss for words for this one. It's something that I did not expect to see from Eldari. It's very interesting. You got four armed, you know, six limbed. Well, technically, you could say eight limbed with the little uh, shoulder cannons there. I'd, it's a very interesting design. Obviously, meant to look like a spider. I've seen a few people already joke about this being the you know, the ideal Spider Woman or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, very interesting design overall, and we do also have some slightly more conventional versions of the same style of unit, which uh, look pretty nice as well. So it's still the same, you know, multiple sets of arms and, like, big back armor and stuff, and uh, also very interesting larger energy-type weapons, which is kind of cool in and of itself. But, uh, yeah, it's really good to be seeing such a big range refresh. You know, so far this is just the Phoenix Lords as well. There's still so much else that could be uh, shown off soon with Eldari, but uh, yeah, I'm sure people that actually play Eldari, as I say, are going to be eating good from now on, and in general, I'm just very excited to see what else comes out of this, because there are so many, you know, 
20, 30 year old units, um, you know, where the models are from the 90s and, you know, they need a, re a range refresh. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of this stuff in the future. But that brings us to the Horus Heresy with our newest reveals of what's coming to plastic, starting off with the Arvus Lighter. This, of course, is the classic dropship from 30k, and honestly, I, I really do love it. I, I think it's really cool, and yeah, the fact that it's taken this long to actually get it is kind of crazy enough itself, but uh, yeah, this is such a good upgrade, and obviously it all coming to plastic is so nice. Uh, I feel like they have downscaled it a little bit, um, probably just for the sake of making it, you know, plastic, but uh, yeah, it still looks excellent. You have, you know, room for your pilot, you have room for a gun on the back, it just... Oh, it's so nice. I, I really do like the little box ship. I, I do think it's a really nice aesthetic. And yeah, overall just a very cool thing to finally be getting in plastic. But that wasn't the only reveal. We also got the Valder Tank Hunter, a brand new Malkador um, chassis variation. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. I'm not the biggest fan of tanks as I've made very clear in the past, but this one's nice. I do quite like this basic chassis, but... Uh, yeah, you do also have the option for like, the flamer, the big uh, gas tank on the back. You have the ram, obviously. Just a lot of nice variety there on offer. And yeah, I'm sure people that are fans of tanks are going to enjoy it. And those that are like me that don't really care, you know, it's still something you can appreciate. And at least it's not in epic scale. At least it's actually full scale this time around. Which, uh, that's been something I've been getting a bit tired of, all the epic tanks. But yeah, good to see a new normal full scale, um... <laughs> 40k, not 40k, 30k tank, so very nice. And then finally, it's been long in, you know, it's been long coming down the line, but we finally have the newest Dreadnought to add to the plastic collection, the Dorito. And uh, I know it's technically Dorito or Dorito, I don't actually know for sure, but uh, I just remember, I can't remember which uh, other content creator it is that says it, maybe it's Kirioff, um, but the Dorito Dreadnought is just, is a very funny joke to me, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this guy looks excellent. Obviously, it's the boat chassis. Uh, he looks funny. He looks he looks cool. And uh, we do have two different weapon sets for it, which, uh, yeah, give a nice variety. You've got energy weapons, you've got missiles, you've got all different kinds of things. And, yeah, overall, just very, very cool upgrades for the Dreadnoughts, which, at the end of the day, like, Dreadnoughts are one of my favourite things in Space Marines. And, you know... Regardless of which version it is, I'm always more of a fan of the Leviathan personally, but the Dorito is great. Um, the Derideo, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, I, I just, I really do like this. I think it's really cool to see more variety when it comes to the Dreadnoughts we can field. And uh, my hope is just that we get these rules back in 40k because I, I want to play my, my Dreadnoughts as what they look like rather than what they are. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean. This is, this is really cool. I really do like it. And yeah, three new units coming to plastic for 30k. You love to see it. I love to see an expansion of the 30k plastic line. And yeah, even though one of them's a tank, I still think this is a great selection. But that brings us into Age of Sigma. And starting off with the thing that I'm a little bit less interested in, the Auric War Clans that have been revealed. And uh, yeah, they, they're all right. We've got Hog, Hob, Grot, Slitter boss, um, which is definitely an interesting unit. It's the it's the yellow style uh, cruel boy, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I do quite like all the you know severed heads attached in the hand as well uh, to the spikes. The giant blade just dripping with blood is very interesting. Like overall, it's a very nice model. I do also like the option between having an eye patch or a helmeted head, but uh, yeah, just not my aesthetic when it comes to Auric, and unfortunately that that does kind of extend to the rest of this reveal. Uh, we also do have a very interesting thing, the Boss Rock Tower, that can also be um, designed to be the Scarebob Totem. And, uh, yeah, looks pretty interesting enough itself. It is a two-in-one kit, so, you know, it's not the most interesting in the world, but, you know, it's a, it's a giant skull on some sticks with a little platform. Um, it's good for putting your leader on and stuff like that. It, it is useful, but, uh, yeah, to me, I, I'm never that interested in these sorts of things unless they are exceptionally uh, well designed but yeah it's all right i have to wonder how any of the aura catcher managed to get onto this thing um you know because there isn't any like ladder or rope or anything to get up there but you know i'm sure i'm sure there's a way but 
yeah, overall, kind of interesting, but nothing too special to me. And then, finally, we do also have some manifestations, some endless spells, which, yeah, once again, look pretty alright, nothing too special. I quite like the Bigfoot, the fact that you have the option for Bigfoot and Bigfoot without uh, the foot in the hole is kind of interesting. And, uh, yeah, just just some general or Uruk magic. Can't really complain too much, looks interesting, but uh, I've never been the biggest fan of these sorts of elements within the game, so, yeah, not something for me, but I'm sure some people are going to make um, some some nice work out of this, uh, but yeah, I, that's all I can really say about it. And that brings us to the thing I'm far more interested in, that is for the Gloom Spike Gits, Snarl at the Evil Sun. We have a new Git mob box, and uh, yeah, this army set looks really interesting. It has a lot of the Wolf Riders, which aren't necessarily my favourites when it comes to the Gloom Spike Gits, I'm, I'm much more a fan of the more moon um, side of it, but yeah, the Wolf Riders are definitely interesting, and yeah, we get a new character who's definitely a big boy uh, on his big wolf there. Got a lot of armor, got a lot of uh, just bits and bobs attached to him, which is pretty nice. Nothing too special, it's got to be said, but yeah. Then we also have the unit versions of those with the uh, two-in-one um, uh, gets on the on the wolves there. I like how some of them are, you know, a bit different in height and stature and stuff. I think that's quite quite fun in of itself, but yeah variety of spears and axes and knives and all that kind of fun stuff that you see from from uh, Gloom Spite, but yeah, nothing once again too special to me just because I'm not as big a fan of the wolf stuff. However, I will say the chariots look really, really nice. I do like the overall design of the chariot itself, even if I don't care about the wolves as much. If I could convert that to be Squig um, or Squig Off or something like that, that could be really, really cool to me, but uh, yeah, definitely look pretty cool. And then we also have the much, much larger Doom Diver Catapult, which uh, looks interesting enough itself. I love the uh, the fact that one of the Grots are uh, being launched and, and is starting to fly with uh, some makeshift wings. I think that's really fun. But uh, yeah, I do prefer this to the wolf stuff just because it doesn't have the wolf. It has what looks like a ram uh, built into it, which is kind of fun. But uh, yeah, you do have the option to make it a bit more wolfy if you want it that way, which, you know, is... You know, what it is, I don't know, I mind too much. But uh, definitely looks interesting enough in itself. And then we also have some other chariot variations that just, you know, more wolves. You know, if you like that aesthetic, it's pretty cool. I do quite like the little, um, the very small git that's on the back of one of them. Uh, but yeah, nice variety there, it's got to be said. And yeah, I, I do much prefer these to standard Auric. Um, but yeah, Gloom Spite, uh, it... I prefer the moon stuff. I prefer that sort of aesthetic compared to the wolf stuff. Uh, but yeah, this, this looks really cool. And honestly, the Git Mob army set looks really interesting in terms of what you get with it. You know, it's just a lot of the wolf units, a lot of the smaller ones at least. And uh, yeah, looks pretty interesting overall. And finally, that leaves us with our reveals for the old world. And it is an entire faction reveal, this time for the Empire of Man. And we have seen the inklings of this, but uh, yeah, when it comes to plastic kits, we have a decent amount. I'm not going to go into much detail, I'm just going to kind of slideshow them through. But yeah, there's a lot of new return, well, I say new, there's a lot of returning plastic, so, you know, remolded plastic kits that are coming, and they look pretty good overall. A lot of the standard units that you'd expect, and I've made it very clear that when it comes to both AOS and um, Old World, I'm not a huge fan of the humans. I think they're a little bit too boring for my preferences, but it's nice to see so many plastic kits returning, and that goes for cavalry as well, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, overall the vehicles and stuff are, are quite alright. I, I know a lot of these used to be available in AOS, I'm not sure if they still have the rules existing, but if they do or if they don't, I mean you can still use last, uh, last edition's version of the rules if you really wanted to, but yeah, there's a lot of good units here. We also have some returning resin kits, which, you know, they are Forge World, so it is what it is. But, yeah, if you are a fan of any of those designs, that's pretty nice. And then, interestingly enough, we have an absolute ton of returning metal kits. Uh, mostly for characters, it does make a lot of sense that like it's more specialised units. But, uh, yeah, it's so weird how many metal kits they keep bringing back. Because, at the end of the day, the metal kits are, like, just something that aren't in the standard range anymore. It's so weird whenever they bring back all these metal kits, but yeah, I do quite like them. Some of them look a little bit, you know, aged, but you know, it's old world. You kind of expect some of that, but yeah, overall, very interesting models. Very much look forward to some of these, uh, especially some of the plastic kits, but 
yeah, overall, very interesting stuff coming up, uh, coming for Old World, and I'm sure people that are, you know, fans of the Empire of Man are going to be very excited for some of these units, because some of them are very iconic indeed. But on that note, that is going to be it for this video. Weirdly enough, there wasn't a rumor engine, at least not that I could find. I checked the, on the socials and on the actual um, news site, and as far as I can see, just this week there wasn't one, uh, which is kind of weird, but we did have two um, last week and then not one like the week before that or something like that. I, there was something weird where last week I covered two of them for two weeks, but they came out like two days apart. It was really weird. It was, it was not standard, but uh, yeah, once again, don't seem to actually have one this time. If there is one, I'll obviously cover it next week instead. But in any case, that is going to be it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe to me on Twitter, and ring the bell. See you next upload. Otherwise, comment below for some feelings about any of the topics we've discussed today. And uh, of course, I mentioned at the start of the video, but check out on my second channel. I did do a reaction to those two trailers that I mentioned at the start. And uh, yeah, otherwise, come here from me. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Look at the screen, Just wanna take